So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back, ladies and gents. This is another instalment of Silent Night from 2012 in pieces, as brought to you by the podcast Under the Stairs for December. This is part of our 19 episode arc covering this classic tome of cinema, this remake grandeur as it um, works its way through five minute instalments, five minute bite sized chunks when I get podcasters from around the globe to sit down with me and discuss those five minutes in depth, forensic, if you will. We are covering on this one uh, the penultimate five minutes. This is minutes 85 through 90. And um, this will start off with Santa, like, just throwing, ragdolling our deputy into a wall. And then we'll finish with a kid looking upon his dad as he uh, burns to death, presumably beside his already burning mother. Um, Yeah, it's that sort of movie. Joining me on this episode is my long-suffering co-host. He is a pure joy, a delight. He is magnificent. Some people would even say he's the reason this show is 10 years old. I'm not going to give him all those accolades, but I'm also going to account to the fact that there is hard hard empirical data that says that he is the reason that this show has been travelling on the airwaves for 10 years. He is the man, the myth, the legend, the Baz. Joyeux Noel, sexy ho-ho-hos. Feliz Navidad. Ah, Feliz Navidad. We've already started listening to Christmas songs in the car and the eldest loves that song because she took like a six week course at school in Spanish and they play I think that's the only <laughs> song they played to them so it's the one she's like and she's like she totally just like sings all the way through and I'm like right and she's like can we listen it again I'm like no we've already listened to it 16 times in this 20 minute car journey <laughs> not again not again young winter um, Baz you've you've already been on an episode which may actually come after this episode because yeah I like to That's fuck the magic with. of radio. <laughs> I love to fuck with my listeners. However, we did make a comment, and I want to kind of circle back to this one here. You lucked out really well on this one. Your yeah. previous episode, our still to come episode, which was 45 through 50, has a great death. It has um, some fucking incredibly bad dialogue. Yeah, um, some bonkers dialogue. Yeah, like amazing dialogue. And then your second segment is basically the end of the movie here. So it's the showdown, the OK Corral, which isn't quite an OK Corral, it's a police station, um, with a marauding, psychopathic, serial-killing Santa. 
and our, our hapless deputy who has been told all the way through this movie has not the guts to put a, a bullet in someone uh, facing off against each other um, now you had mentioned on the other recording that you rewatched the movie in its entirety and this one actually yep. it's kind of turned the corner and you enjoy it whilst acknowledging all its flaws of which there are many Yeah, yeah. Um, I did want to throw a little curveball question at you though like, are you a fan of holiday-based horror? Uh, yes. And if so, I knew you were going to say yes, do you have a favourite? Do you have a favourite kind of Christmas-themed horror movie? One that's set at Christmas time? Or one that involves a killing Santa? One that involves... Um, the, the one that I really liked was... I don't know, it came out a bit maybe about eight years ago, uh, A Christmas Horror Story, it's called. Mm. What, the kind of anthology one. The one with Shatner? Yeah! Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, I really loved that, and I loved the way they tied everything together in the final segment and all that, yeah. That the was one I think what I... what's actually going on in that movie yeah. with the Santa Claus <laughs> and the reporter is fucking dark. <laughs> yeah. So I... Um... I think I bought that for my daughter one year. Yeah. When she was early teens and sort of starting to get into horror. I bought that as a Christmas present and we watched it. And I've, I've watched that one a couple of times. Yeah, I really like that one. I quite like Krampus. I saw Krampus after it and Krampus had all the buzz. Yeah. Because it's Krampus. And it, there's some of the big names were in it as well. Adam Thingy. Is it Adam Scott, the guy in it? That's right, it's Adam Scott. That's yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Um, and Krampus is good and it's fun, but... I, I didn't like it as much as that. The other one, I, I was flicking through, I was looking for something to watch the other night there, and I saw on Shudder, it's, there's one called uh, all, was all the Creatures Were Stirring or something yeah, like that. Do you know who directed All the Creatures Were Stirring? Right, well, <laughs> before we go into that, I, I'm trying to remember if I've seen it or not. <clears throat> I've got a funny feeling I maybe watched it last year. Yeah. But I can't remember. Who directed it? Well, interestingly enough, Baz, it's directed by uh, Rebecca McKendry, who we spoke about relatively recently when you were talking about a certain glory hole-based horror movie. <laughs> Is that the same person? Oh, literally the movie she made before it, so... Um... Glorious! <laughs> as, her, as her previous... So she, I think that's technically her debut feature, is the Christmas right. one and Inglorious is the movie. But for the life of me, I can't remember if I've actually seen it. It's or not, not but... very good. It's not very good. It's very. It's, it feels quite cheap and kind of like a one note idea that doesn't. It would be a great short as a feature length uh, kind of it pads for time. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the, in terms of the Christmas horrors, while I say I quite like Krampus. It spawned so many fucking Krampus films. Was the problem? Yeah. There was just a glut of them after more. that. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever seen any of them, barring the original Krampus movie. Um, and I, I genuinely didn't think it was anywhere near as good as a Christmas horror story was. Oh, interesting, interesting. Not where I thought you were going. No. No, I thought I thought there was going to be like a like for me. A it black. always comes back to Gremlins. Gremlins is my favourite. I fucking like luck. I don't think I've ever seen all of Gremlins. What, what are we doing here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why are we I watching think it's, this? I think it's a bit like uh, Ghostbusters. You remember how I had never clips seen of it, and you've just never seen yeah, it together. Really I don't think I've ever sat down and watched it from beginning to end. Um, sad. That's sad. That's a, that's I did. I, I did have a, a Gremlins themed cordial for my soda stream machine as a young man. Though it was called Stripe after the baddie, and it was green, like a really dark green colour, which is the colour of a Gremlin's blood. So it all makes sense now. It's um, probably why my memory's so bad nowadays. It's fucking like what I love it. <laughs> I love about, what I love about Gremlins is how dark it is. I've, I've said this many times. It's how dark it is that people can't remember. There's a monologue in the middle of that one where uh, Phoebe Kate says that the reason that she doesn't like Christmas is because her dad one year dressed as Santa. Well, her dad every year dressed as Santa, but 
you know, would come and deliver presents to the kids. And this one year, he just didn't come home. And they couldn't work out what was going on, but there was a smell that started permeating around the house after that. And they found that our dad had dressed up like Santa and tried to work his way down the chimney and then died in the chimney. He just stuck in there and died. See, I don't, I don't remember that movie. at all. In the middle yeah. of a kid's movie, this is the story that's mentioned. And everyone, whenever I tell that story, people are like, I'm the Hampton Gremlins. And I'm like, it fucking does. Go back and watch it. <laughs> she she spells it out. The music is all somber and serious. She talks about it like clearly. It's not as if someone cuts over her. She describes the whole thing out, and a, a generation of people have just been like that. That never happened. <laughs> like, I think uh, probably my favourite Christmas movie though of all time, out with horror, uh, is probably Trading Places. Trading Places is such a fucking good movie, man. Loved Honestly, it, man. it's effortlessly. Fa- it is Jamie one of the f- Lee. Well, Jamie I'm go- Lee. I'm going to swing back to the fact that Jamie Lee is peak hotness, um, but it's also oh. it's one of those ones where like it's peak Murphy, like Eddie yeah. Murphy's like effortlessly killing that one, and Aykroyd plays off him so fucking well. Yeah. Like you forget yeah. how like you it's easy to forget because Aykroyd's done a lot of dodgy roles how fucking great his comic timing is. Mm-hmm. And the two of them together. An amazing movie. An amazing movie. Yeah, yeah. I loved I loved trading places. I not seen it we in years sing, actually. I thought we were going to both sink into the obvious choice for best Christmas movie. And that is Calvair. Um <laughs> It's the best Christmas movie ever. I, I forgot that was set at Christmas, to be 100% honest. 100% set at Christmas. That does not have... Oh, nah, that's a film I'm going to need to get back to one of these days. It has not long been released. I don't think in the UK, and it's imminent for a UK release because it's been done in America in 4K, which right. is too much case for a movie like that, but um, <laughs> I, I, I absolutely fucking love it. it is, like, it's a movie that every time I watch it, I think it... it move slowly towards that masterclass status for me i think it's it's so weird and it's so off-putting and it's so fucking dark um i love every second of it but well, that was years yeah, ago we that, did that she watched that and you were in fairness you were higher on it than dave who watched i was going to say it was big dave that was on that with yeah, us big dave was not as keen on it overall but he likes he likes bleak movies, and I thought Davey will be in on that one. And apparently, set at Christmas time, Big Davey's out. Um, <laughs> he's, he's not having any of your shit. Um, we're, we're beating around the bush here, giving you listeners a little bit of bang for your buck here. We do have to talk about this epic of fight scene here. Um, there isn't actually a lot that happens in your five minutes. It's mostly action. There isn't a lot of dialogue, but it does give us a reveal on who the killer is. So yep. this kicks off with Santa driving the deputy into a wall in the police station. I've written here: the sprinkler system is on, and everything is bathed in red light. Um, they're beginning to struggle with each other, and the deputy then sprays mace right in Santa's eyes. Good old fucking a good like a good five second spray right in his eyes which does not appear to do anything to Santa because for a second he holds his hands on his eyes and then he's fine yeah it's not how mace works Baz like have you ever have you ever had pepper spray I ha- once had a CS gas pellet rubbed over my forehead and I <laughs> thought I was on the way out <laughs> yeah It was this fucking weird mate we had. He was... I didn't really know the guy well. When I kind of fell in with the crowd of boys towards the end of school that kind of have maintained as my school friends for all these years, he was a friend of theirs from yeah. previous years kind of thing, you know. So, But he'd gone to the army and uh-huh. would come back like in, when he was on leave and all that kind of stuff. Um... And this, t- <laughs> we're in the pub, which I spoke about in my other episode, if, if you've heard that one so far. Um, back at Christmas, we're all out in the pub, place is fucking mobbed. He produces this 
what looked like the world's biggest ecstasy tablet <laughs> from his pocket, right? Um, oh, no. it, it had been they'd been doing some kind of maneuvers and they'd been using CS gas and he had somehow managed to smuggle this CS gas pellet out and he just he literally just held it up and glanced it off the top of my head mm -hmm. just over my forehead kind of thing like, what the fuck are you doing and then I couldn't speak see the minute it hit me like my throat just closed up eyes I thought it was blind it was horrific Absolutely horrific. Just for shits and giggles. Shits and giggles. I thought it'd be funny. It wasn't particularly directed at me. I think just when he decided he was going to do it, I was the one that was there. And yeah, but it was fucking horrendous, man. But I always I remember my uh, another friend who'd been in the army, my pal Jamie. Um, I remember him talking about his basic training, and they mm -hmm. have to do the the gas room when they go into the big concrete box and they've all got their masks on but they then have to take them off and breathe and breathe it in. It's, it's so that they are aware of the effect of it, so that they know what's coming. Jamie said oh, everything that he did in the army, whether it was basic training or whether it was when he was actually time served, he said it was the worst thing that he did. It well, was horrendous, he said. I mean, I, I, I understand, right, I, uh, part of me part of me likes the idea of like a police officer who is going to use a taser, having that done on them so they are fully aware of what it is they're putting someone through when they draw yeah. said weapon. I, I There's part of me that agrees with that. But there's a difference between... Well, I don't know what an electric shot feels like. Oh, that's what an electric shot feels like. Which is... It stuns you, but an electric shot dissipates pretty quick after it's done. Yes. Something that has like an effect that is going to last hours, you know, hours to pass through your system where you like you you can't breathe, your nose is blocked, your eyes are running, and all the rest. And at that point, where I'm just like, oh, people are just like, let's test it on each other. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a line, Baz. There's a line that's been uh, there's a line that's been crossed here, and I don't know if I understand it all. That's what I'm saying to you. I think it's maybe one step too far. <laughs> Just as Duncan's two cents there out there for the listeners. Uh, meanwhile, talking about one step too far, um, Santa just like like basically little flick with water in his eyes. He's fine. Grabs her, throws her over a filing cabinet, ragdolls her, and then she gets up, and he just uh, well she gets up. She noticed one of those uh, in case of emergency break glass Axe. axes, which. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever actually seen one in the UK. I don't think you get them in the UK. <laughs> we we have a fire blanket. We've so. we have something that is practically useful to save someone's life and in America they give they give people something that is practically <laughs> useful for taking one's life. That's yeah. good to know. Just in case you can't find a weapon of your own. <laughs> No, there's one on the wall over there. Just take that one. You don't need to worry about the fire. <laughs> you don't need to worry about the fire. You can break it wherever you want. Um, so she smashes the glass here, pulls the axe out, and now we have what I've written here as a full-on axe fight, which seems a lot sexier in a porn context, but not quite here. Yeah. Um, Santa wins the exchange because he is about three foot taller and about a hundred pounds heavier. And um, not only does he win this one, he once again, like, ragdolls are right through a pane of glass and she, she kind of falls to the ground. Um, and she begins to kind of blank out at this point because, the, like, everything, she's got, like, a bit of trauma, she's like that. And she's just looking around and just as she's, like, coming back to consciousness, she looks around and she just so happens to see a handy flamethrower lying on the ground. Yeah. That's right, ladies and gents. Just, just a trusty flamethrower. Everything's soaking. Like the, the like this sprinkler system has been on for but but by God this flamethrower's just going to light itself up. <laughs> I'm I'm no Scientologist or scientist, <laughs> uh, but I don't think that's how fire works. I'm just saying there's combustible elements here that doesn't make sense in the world of the physics. However, she managed to get herself up with a flamethrower and then just unloads a torrent of flame. On our Santa, who's wearing a cheap Lights Santa suit. Lights that motherfucker up. 
Well, he's up like a Roman cheap, candle, big man. One of those cheap uh, polythene fucking laced inserted fucking Santa suits. He goes up. He goes up hard. And he does the old wavy hand thing. And it's a yeah. great stunt. Once again, practical stunt. Someone is in a Santa yes, suit. Yes, right. Being lit on fire. I wouldn't do that. Um, and yeah, I put I put here Santa is engulfed in flame and goes up like a dry Christmas tree, falling over, still burning. Um, the deputy walks over and then along the corridor to help Brenda, the receptionist, yeah. who is just screaming behind the door. She's fucking useless. Deputy kicks the door down, pulls her out. Um, Criminally, and she's still fully dressed. She's like she didn't take her top. What off is the point? Her. Of having a hot Asian called Brenda, if she's not at least going to be topless. God, love this damn idea. It, Brenda. I need to hide myself and take my top off. Like, yeah. <laughs> what's my motivation? I'm, I might be all sweaty when I come out. This room is probably best. <laughs> like, if I'm what's topless. my character's motivation in this scene? You're hot and you're Asian. All right, cool, thanks. Um, like, yes. <laughs> um, they make it out of the police station coughing and crying as it continues to burn and we get a shot of Santa's mask melting in the flame. There is, however, Baz, no fucking body. Yeah. No body here. Which makes us think that Santa might still be alive. I wonder what has... Ha- oh no, the movie's just going to explain this. Right, it's so like, like any thing of, oh, maybe he'll come back. No, no, no. The movie explains this. We, we transition to a brand new day. There's a man with a burned half face that pulls up to the end of town sign. He's in a van, which is a chimney repair van because... <laughs> I did have a chuckle at that. He's a Santa see. killer. I've written here, get it, chimney. Um, he pulls down his sun visor ah. and sees a picture of a well-to-do I'll family. shove it right up your chocolate chimney cunt so I'll be shoving it <laughs> ho ho yes. no um, he's, ho, uh, ho, ho. he sees a, a picture of a well-to-do family a father, a son and a mother and then we get a flashback Baz which yeah. feels like this could have happened earlier much in the much movie. earlier <laughs> earlier in the movie the flashback is a boy sitting in the back of a police car as he watches his father dressed like Santa wielding a flamethrower inexplicably apparently 40 years ago right <laughs> he's just got like like a I don't know I'd like a souvenir from Nam um, he's just <laughs> oh my god I've watched this twice and I get this wrong how did you get this wrong yeah right you, you finish telling the thing like... and then I'll explain what I thought had happened so basically this this kid's flashing back to his dad who went crazy dressed like Santa with a flamethrower 40 odd years ago um, the police arrive an officer jumps at the car says drop the weapon he draws his gun he says Roy please don't make me do this the father raises up the flamethrower the cop snarls and shoots the gun which makes the slow motion lion roar sound effect which is used more than once in this movie and the Santa drops down dead and it's revealed that the police officer that shot the Santa was actually our deputy's father don't know if you picked up on that yes I did pick up on that yeah. which reveals the cryptic line earlier on where he says to her it's not the first time a Bradamore or Bragamore or whatever their surname is has taken down a, an evil Santa um, psycho Santa yeah something. Psycho Santa the kid looks at his dad as he burns to death presumably beside his mother what did you not pick up from this this is self explanatory weirdly I I thought that the child in the back of the police car was the deputy as a child oh, right. and, and I thought that the father had survived it right. and become this scarred monster that went about well, this is the thing. I didn't like, realise it was a traumatised child killing in the original in Silent for Night, father. Deadly Night. The the small child uh, that survives the Santa killing is it happens right at the very beginning, and the parents going away from. But like, there's two two big scenes that follow the original movie. The first one is you know the guy that looks like Jay from Jay and Silent Bob who's sitting with his granddad who's like all comatose and he steals money from him 
Oh yeah, yes. Uh -huh. right, well, that's that is a horrible retelling of the original movie, where the young kid is sitting with his comatose granddad, who then like it's right at the very start of the opening scene. This fucking guy who looks like Santa basically grabs his grandson. It's like that. Beware of Christmas. You know, it's like like terrifies. Right. Us. And as they're driving out, they drive along a road and they stop. Presumably to help a hitchhiker who is actually dressed like Santa, who turns out to be an escaped mental patient who not only kills the father but rapes the mother in front of the kid. <laughs> nice. And then the kid gets put in an orphanage and then grows up totally fucked up and then snaps one day at Christmas as an adult and then goes on a killing spree. Right. In this movie, they wait to the end of this. <laughs> to the very fucking final shot to show a father going crazy and murdering Tim's people and the kid sees his father get gunned down and that's what traumatises him to become the killer in the town but I'll, I'm like, I I love this because it just makes it's so late in the day and I couldn't give a fuck <laughs> like, at this point I don't care who Santa is Santa is nameless to me in this movie um, but that's where it ends Baz, do you have a favourite segment scene thing that happens in these five minutes? In these five minutes? Um, yep. Oh, now let me think. As you kind say, the, the, yeah, because yeah, it's pretty much an action scene. I, I, I thought that the stunt where he throws the girl, when he throws the female um, through deputy the through, through the plate glass window was pretty bitching, I've yep. got to say. It's practical. Um, and she that's takes a, it like an absolute that's a practical thing, you know. Shot in slow motion, it's really well filmed. The 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 disparity between how well certain things are executed in this movie to the script is mind boggling. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's absolutely totally. fucking mind boggling. I, I I like for all I kinda hate it. I like the scene of the like her getting up with the flamethrower and flaming Santa down even though he's surrounded by like turned on sprinklers which would like put out that flame in a couple of seconds but his mask is going to continue to burn even though once again there's water dripping everywhere and pissing down from the ceiling I love the, the, the yeah the just... and it's, it's made of polyester and chemicals yeah. so it would have burnt out in about three <laughs> seconds you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> well, it burned it quicker than a match. Like <laughs> the the one the, the one thing that particularly annoyed me actually was in that kind of origin reveal scene at the end. Yep. Um, when the cop shoots him, yeah, you see him going down, and his flamethrower backpack, <laughs> for want of a better term, comes off. But you see it sort of ignite. Yeah. Now. I've seen like footage from the war. Yes. Like when a flamethrower goes up, it, it incinerates everything for like a two block radius. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yet the guy, <laughs> it takes him for a wee while to go down and oh my God, my jacket's on fire. Well, jacket's, your liver would be on fire if that thing had exploded, pal. Do you know what I mean? I always come back to that Austin, Power, oh, Austin Powers line. I, I, I'm not dead, I'm just very badly burned. <laughs> you shot me. I can't believe you shot me. Um, it is, like, it's so silly. It's, it, and it's a, to be honest, it's a needless ending. I don't think this movie yeah. ever actually needs to give the reveal of who Santa is or why he did what he did. He's just not there anymore. And it's the Michael Myers thing. That's what, like, to me, this movie emulates Halloween so much. So much so it even brings like fucking Malcolm McDowell in to this movie from the remake. And all it has to do is just be like that, he's not there anymore. Which is Halloween's ending. The original ending from yeah. Halloween, the look over the balcony, Michael Myers isn't there. Just do that and then the fact they tag on that ending, I don't know if they thought franchise. Wait, when was this made? 2012. So this is after... This See, is, is it not more of that kind of... It's that modern idea that everything has to have a quirky, unexpected origin type reveal. I think... I can see why they did it. I'm not saying it was right doing it. I think it's I mean? more to do with when it came out. I think had this movie come out 
maybe two years before you would have got a sequel, but 2012, we... I, in 2012, we are transitioning away from that sort of movie into... As this is the year before Podcast Under the Stairs started. Like, see, mm. indie horror is fucking just taking off. And by yeah. 2013, we're getting movies like The Evil Dead remake, we're getting Maniac, we're getting stuff that it just has like a lot more interest. The Battery, like, shit like yeah, that yeah. is all coming out within a year of this movie. I think a movie like this does okay, doesn't really do much to make anyone want to see a sequel and as a result that ending kind of feels like it's like the shittest it's like the mo- it's the serial killer littlest hobo ending the, the no, whole thing the is very he's coloured by numbers me. he's like at the fucking town at the end where's he going yeah the whole thing is, is very coloured by numbers I mean there's, yes. there's nothing there's nothing really original <laughs> in there at all can. and like I say I, I enjoyed this film much more this time round um, I'm not going to sit here this... and argue that it's a brilliant film, but I have it's fun... not a bad movie either, you know. It's entertaining, and to me, a Christmas horror slasher movie should be entertaining. Should be dumb yeah. as fuck and entertaining. If it yeah, does yeah. that, I'm a happy guy, and this movie delivers on that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the Baz will be back. We, you may have already heard this because his other episode has dropped first. Oh, this might be the first time I'm saying it, but the Baz will be back in December. He is on the last episode of this year, on the 24th of December, where he joins me for not a Christmas Eve commentary, rather a in-depth review of a serious fucking movie you guys did not look... You picked shit, I'll be honest, that poll was embarrassing. <laughs> it, but was it was one dumb of, shit. It was the, one of the worst polls I've ever seen. I actually wrote, I think I wrote a comment like that, I trusted you and you're going to fist me to death here, aren't you? Um, <laughs> but you guys came through at the end, overwhelmingly, Near Dark is the one that scored um, full marks. Baz has never seen Near Dark. Near Dark came out nope. the same year as The Lost Boys, and I will tell you now, I prefer Near Dark to The Lost Boys. You shut your filthy old mouth, McKinney. Until you watch it. Soundtrack is nowhere near as good. Movie is fucking incredible I absolutely love it it's one of my favourite well, vampire movies of all time and we're going to be covering I will, it I will judge it by the quality of its saxophone so was my cliche okay I still believe <laughs> um, but we have so we're going to be doing that we may throw a little something extra in depending on the time depending on the availability and depending on how much trauma I want to put Baz through just before he celebrates with his family. Um, so yeah, he's going to be back for that. That'll be dropping on Christmas Eve. Ladies and gents, we'll be doing episodes every single day of this month from the 1st to the 24th, which means, by the law of averages and just my calculations, there will be another episode coming tomorrow. So until then, take care of yourselves. I'll speak to you then.